Okay, so I got out of my oil trade uh, a couple of days ago, uh, right here. Uh, not here actually. Uh, I got out right here. Uh, so that wasn't that wasn't a bad trade. I got out just on time. And so what actually happened is uh, that night actually there was news that uh, Saudi and Russia are not going to meet as expected on the Monday. So they postponed it. Uh, towards the end of the week. Uh, so that obviously don't disappoint the market because the market already priced in the fact that they're going to meet and most probably come to a deal. So anyhow, uh, price has just been moving sideways and now the movements have become so small it's quite clear the market is just waiting. They're just waiting for something to happen. Something to happen as in either an agreement or a disagreement. Uh, naturally you can imagine if an agreement is reached, uh, oil will probably start shooting up again. And if there's a disagreement, then you can imagine oil coming back down close to 20 again. So this is my hourly chart. Uh, it, it does look like there's a chart pattern going on, a pennant or something like that. Um, I don't buy into that uh, on this occasion, uh, simply because of this gap here. Uh, the way I see it is an interruption to the chart pattern, so I'm not going to base on any chart pattern here. But I'm just going to look at hourly, oh, sorry, daily. Uh, I just want to see what it looks like. And you'll see on a daily scale, it does still look intact and poised to go up. Uh, we may see momentarily uh, price retracing to around 24 or something, or as low as 2 and 20. Again, you never know. But thereafter, we should be on a good, uh, good move up. Um, so it's a question of getting timing right and the trade right. So given given that given that price is moving sideways quite a bit i'm actually going to go into a trade uh, not the only trade a trade because i plan to add another trade once the price once we have some price movement uh, so i've done some number crunching as you can see i sort of keep a di trading diary here on my same spreadsheet so it's a history of what's been happening and my observations and the price movements so that i can look back at it at any time and uh, remind myself okay this is what happened that's what happened this is why it happened this is why i took a position and so on uh, often when you're doing a number of different trades or a number of different instruments it's really easy to forget what what was your last sort of uh, uh, decision and why and things like that <coughs> Right, so I've done a little bit of a number crunching and what I decided is this is what I'm going to do. Uh, in fact, let me just pull up a PowerPoint just to demonstrate it to you guys. Um, nope. Let's use this. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in up, oh, going, go in long one position uh, one position as in uh, not how many options or things like that just a position so my position my size might be two grand or whatever it is I'm going to go in a long position now now suppose now suppose if price comes to around 24 it retraces a bit more because at the moment it's about 27 if it retraces about 24 I'm going to go in a long again at 24. I'm going to take a second position now suppose I still got my timing wrong and price goes close to say 21 I'm not gonna say 20 because there's no guarantee to be as low as that again close to 21 I'm going to long again at 21 so I might end up with three different positions and you might be wondering why why is this guy doing this um, because my broad analysis is showing me that oil is most likely to go up now uh, intraday or you know intra week shall I call it the oil might end up falling uh, it's possible it will go to 24 it's possible it might go to 21 at worst case or something like that or even 2019 you know um, so in that case I don't want to sort of run away and miss out the opportunity I'm just going to add on more trades and what actually happens is something known as dollar cost averaging so your price sort of uh, averages out to a lower enterprise and hopefully if it does reach around 21 when it does bounce up all three positions will uh, go back into profit and I'll have a nice little uh, uh, profit um, but suppose suppose I go in long now and price doesn't uh, fall in which case my fourth option is I'm going to add one more position 
at a higher price okay before it sort of uh, zooms off because uh, obviously I wanted a, a sizable position on this because I'm so convinced that oil is going to rise um, so this is this is the strategy that I have in mind I've sort of summarized in a different wording here I've sort of mentioned the different ratios I'm gonna have in terms of my calls and puts but uh, uh, the scope of this video is is not about the ratios of calls and puts because uh, that's basically the sort of strategy that I'm using in terms of my position um, hopefully in further videos I can talk about this kind of stuff um, so and again I'm, I'm experimenting myself experimenting myself don't forget uh, it's been 10 years coming back on the market again these ratios and stuff I'm just sort of experimenting see what works and what doesn't work something interesting I should show you actually is I've tried a ratio already on my virtual trading account and I was pleasantly surprised um, it's quite shocking actually I'll show you so here we've got the virtual trade that I did for S&P 500 uh, with uh, oh, it's, it's a straddle um, but more inclined towards the downside so what I did was I bought 200 pull options and 80 call options so I'm more heavy in the downside but look what's happened interestingly enough even though the market's been rising it went up five percent yesterday pre-market is up four percent again today as well let me just quickly show you just so that you're convinced that the market is rising uh usa 500 that's what they call it on this they call it spy as well no no, no that's the index of the index let's go usa 500 ah this one that's the one i want let me show you the chart for this interestingly enough let's just go to daily oh look this is where we went in with our put because again we were expecting the market to continue its decline but then you've got some news coming out about corona slowing down and whatnot and the market just jumped up around seven percent yesterday and already up probably another four percent today uh three three point fifteen percent today um so that's that so you'd expect me to be in a loss on my virtual trade but because I did a straddle with options and wait, let's go back. Yep, I did a straddle. My put option is on a loss of four grand, and that's on the virtual portfolio. By the way, this is not real money. But my call option, which was the hedge, the protection, has actually exceeded my put option value and is up seven grand. So my net is three thousand in profit, even though I was wrong. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Um, so and and these are sort of uh, things that I'm playing around with. Uh, again, this is stuff that I used to do back in the days, just jogging my memory on how things were, uh, trying different ratios to see what's the best outcome I get. And again, these ratios aren't really out of nowhere. Uh, there, there's some basis on this. Um, so obviously, I've got some prior experience in terms of using these ratios. So uh, it, it's hard for me to sort of. Give you a history on these numbers. Uh, just take my word for it. Uh, this is what I'm going to use at the moment. I might tweak them as I go along in my journey. Uh, but yeah, let's get down to the trading. So according to my uh, number crunching, uh, ba -ba -ba I've chosen my put. In fact, my call was hit. My open price is 27. So my call position is going to be a strike 31, where I feel I'll get the best risk return. Uh, ratio that's showing minus 9.3 because this is wrong this at 35 and it gives me a 2.6 which I feel is a healthy level anything beyond that uh, I get something uh, a decreasing return ratio uh, so I like that it's about four dollars away from the current price so I'm slightly out of the money um, and if things were to fall if things were to fall down to the 20 range, then my good risk reward here would be at a strike of 23. Uh, normally, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't even have to do that. What I do is, whatever the current price is, if my call is four dollars away, I'd also put my put four dollars away. It doesn't have to be four dollars away. Uh, it could have been a put at strike 26 or 25 or 24. It will still work, but my, I might not end up with uh, the best balance or. Uh, best uh, reward 
So again, still experimenting. I'm going to over my over, over the next few trades and stuff. I'll show you what happens when you choose different uh, strikes uh, with some real trades. So for now, I've just kept the strikes for the pull and the call equal distance away from uh, the current price. So let's go in and trade uh, strike 31 call. That's what I want. Um, I'm on the virtual portfolio. Let's go into real money. All right, so I've only got that one position. Um, here you can see, in fact, before I move on, you can see my real position it's not in a profit, it's still in a loss, a loss of about 400. But uh, given that I'm totally wrong, that's not too bad, you know, that's not too bad because of my hedge. My hedge has given me a profit while on my actual trade it's a loss. So my net is only about minus 477. So I can live with that. Um, cool. And in fact, even if I'm wrong on going, uh, this will just keep adjusting and my loss should not really exceed anything more than 600. Um, so that's the beauty of doing a straddle with options that is um, so let's let's trade let's trade let's go to oil where's oil ah commodities options oils calls I would like a hold on what it, it's a 30.5 call 30.5 call Don't know. Oh wow, these guys have fallen significantly today. All right, 30.5 call. So it's something in between, something that's not uh, fallen too much and something that's not too stable. Okay, uh, as per my calculation, that's the one I need. So that's the one I need, I'll go for it. Let me just quickly get a chart anything, finding what dodgy going on here. Oh, I see two bottoms here. That's, this is, oh no, no, this is, this is daily. Hold on, let's look at hour. Okay, so it's, it's mirroring the oil price closely. I mean, it looks like it's just going to tend down. We don't know, but even if it does, I don't really care. I've, I've got to straddle with the hedge, so I don't really, uh, I'm not going to freak out too much. I'm just going to go with another position as I explained. So 30.5, yes. yep, 34.5. Oil call 30.5. Hey. Literally while I was talking to you, this just changed, didn't it? Well, that's not fair. This just literally changed just as I was talking to you, because I'm pretty sure it said minus 12%. Okay, never mind. That's that's real trading for you. Uh, this is uh, this is what we call slippage. So by the time you place a trade and it's executed, the price can be slightly different. So 30.5 call. Um, Looks like the options already skewing downwards. Um, yeah, I'm going in nonetheless. Okay, you can see it looks like uh, it's going to be a bad entry. Uh, possibly, I could be wrong because the problem is the market so fragile it's really hard to tell um, what's likely to happen next. So, looking at this, it might turn down here. But I've got my strategy laid out. I'm going to go into another position. So for now, I'll take this one. Um, ba -ba -bum. Right, last time, last time I went with a thousand options, but I think my budget has increased this time now. Yep, my budget has increased because my balance has increased. Oh, by the way, my balance is actually ten thousand, starting at five thousand. It's showing fifteen thousand. It's showing fifteen thousand because I topped up uh, another five grand. Because uh, remember, I said in my early videos, I'm gonna start off with a ten thousand account. So that was the remaining five grand that was supposed to come in. Um, so the actual profit here is only five grand. Um, right, so we're going for two thousand options. Accounts double the size, so our trade size has increased. Uh, I'm not going to mention a closed profit just yet because I think it'd be too uh, too premature. But I'm, I'm I'm thinking something around something around here three three point four uh, something around there uh, at best somewhere up there so we'll see we'll see all in good time um, ba -ba -bum. and let's click buy 
and you will see instantly it goes into a loss. Let's look at my position. You'll see instantly it goes into a loss. That that's the spread between the bid and the ask, uh, which I explained on one of the earlier videos. Uh, and that's the profit that these guys have taken. Uh, um, again, got no choice, got to pay that. Um, so now let's go for the hedge position, which is the put, and the put was at 22.5. Okay, so uh, oh goodness me. That was a uh, seriously bad timing, right? I just got into my position, and oil is slipping. Uh, I know why it's happening. Uh, U.S. pre-market is open now, uh, so the U.S. market will be open in a half an hour, and the pre-market trading is just pushing it down. Um, so, yeah, hmm, very bad timing. But no worries. No worries. Uh, let's go in with our put at the uh, as long as we come out, you know, winning on the at the end. That's what's important. So let's go in with the put, which was at 22.5 strike of 22.5. Let's that's down 8 percent. Oh goodness me! It's not letting me buy. There's not enough uh, opportunities there. Uh, I've, I've got a chance. Jeez. I don't want that many. It's 2000, what's that going to give me? That. No, no, no. Hold on a minute. Got to follow my ratios. A 4 to 3. Yep, so keeping to my ratios 4 to 3, I'll have to go in on 1500 puts on this. That's if there's any liquidity. It's not letting me buy. It's not letting me buy. And it's let me buy. Am I in? Am I in? I am in. Okay, I got my put. Yep, got my put. Again, you can see it's really going to loss. That's because of the profit these guys are taking. You can imagine how much profit they're making from all the people that are trading with the, uh, with the service. Um, sorry, let's look at the chart again. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So that's it. So we'll revisit this uh, when there's more movement. Hi guys, it's Nasir here again. Um, it's 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 10:30 at night in Dubai now. I'm in Dubai, and uh, I was in bed. And out of curiosity, I was just checking on my phone. Uh, just a quick glance. I just want to see what was happening uh, near the close of trade, uh, U.S. time, uh, before the U.S. markets close. Uh, and I glanced at this and uh, had a bit of a shock actually. Oil started to slide again. Uh, I was sort of expecting the oil to be sliding towards the end, um, but not by that much. You remember in my last video I said that we'd go in again at 24, and it, it is at that region 24. So, uh, you know, I've got to stick by my rule. Uh, the price has come down as I pretty much expected, so I'm going to go in with another trade because uh, I don't know if 24 is a place where it's going to stop or it's going to continue sliding. So, I'm going to get in with another position at 24, and if it does slide further, then I'm going to go in with another position close to 20, around 21. But just before that, I just want to quickly look at the positions because uh, I noticed the loss has reduced. Uh, I just want to see what's going on. So you can see, I did a top up of the trade actually. I got some uh, calculations wrong on the last incident. I, I did a few, too few options, so I just topped it up. As you can see, the top up has balanced itself out. Uh, and mind you, this is for a, uh, I'm expecting the price to increase but because the price has dropped and my put premium has increased it's balanced itself out and my uh, initial uh, position is close to balancing out it's around 400 loss and the market one that I had before uh, it's on a loss of about 500 so still sticking to the 2 600 range so as you can see it's not done much damage to my portfolio so it's all good um, that's the whole beauty of doing straddles